Patrick. Patrick. Eh, Norman. It's September 29th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your mm. bad self. And welcome because I like the bear podcast. Vin Sherman length episode number 527. Uh, and it's that time again. Finally, after uh, a couple of months. But it's time to find out. So August was still overnight, and of course we got drunk. But uh, <laughs> after that, I, I switched from being overnights to daylight. So I'm back in the sunlight. Uh, it burns. Not that I've gotten a burn because I try to avoid it as much as possible. Uh, because that's just the guy who I am. And just yesterday, well, we know it's autumn. Which also means allergy season. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at the video and you see me kind of scratching down and looking all droopy eyed and maybe my nose is red... Uh, it's, it's, I checked the pollen forecast <laughs> and it said ragweed was high and tree pollen was kind of moderate, like, but mm -hmm. still kind of more on the high side. Um, yeah. So if I suddenly go mute, uh, it's probably because I'm sneezing and trying to find something to wipe my nose with. Mm. Okay. So. Allergy sufferers unite. Yeah. Yeah. Like, good God. Uh, uh, also, if I seem a little. Suffers. Also, it's like I'm. Because I did take like a generic Benadryl. So I'm kind of like. Oh. Oh. If you so if like I seem like plus. <laughs> <laughs> so if you fall into a coma, it's okay. You took Benadryl. We it's, understand. It's, it's fine. <laughs> So if I suddenly just go quiet, these guys will take care of most of it and I'll hopefully be up enough to end the show. But yeah. <laughs> Although I do have some more uh, the clips to play, so. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Allergies. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah I yeah. was realized. I agree with that one. Sounds like Polly needs to lay off the drugs if it's high. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I noticed that this week as well. But this literally just started. Just this literally started just yesterday. Oh, uh, for me, it's been all week. Uh, yeah. Other other than that, I'm dull and boring. Been watching a lot. Oh, I bet uh, since uh, YouTube TV finally got uh, Food Network. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, and uh, something else has just started back up that uh, that has gotten me super excited too. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, Damon, what's been going on with you? Um. Oh gosh. So since August, uh, um, I first thing is I did Cincinnati Leather. Um, very fun event here in town. It's being a lot more progressive in which that they do not, um, it is not a gender specific title, but it is just Cincinnati Leather. Um, so congratulations to Logan Savage. They um, won um, the most recent Cincinnati Leather title and they are using the mixed title um, as part of their, so they're mixed Cincinnati Leather. So congratulations to Logan. It was a lot of fun. It was a long, long, long contest, um, but 
they're still working out some of the kinks. Ha ha. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, so there's that. Um, work has been interesting. Um, I think we've talked about it on the show before. Um, my department got outsourced by a third party to a third party administrator. Um, so most of August and September was spent getting work done so that they have less to take over when they take over, um, saying goodbyes to my fellow coworkers because me and one of, me and my boss essentially got to stay on as the stay team for the. Um, so I'm still at Macy's. I'm still working, but um, the rest of the guys left, um, which was kind of good and bad, sad kind of mm. thing. Um, we did um, have a fun week. Prior, prior to them leaving, we went to dinner, or we went to lunch on company pay, oh, nice. <laughs> and um, had some really nice burgers. And then um, we planned an outing where we went to a candle making place and got some candles made, um, which was a lot of fun. I love the candle lab; they're here in town, and uh, I think they have stores all over. But it was good. It was really good. I made a candle. Um, with some shocking scents. Um, it's um, leather, obviously. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, mug and brush. And then um, old books. So it was a really fun, it's a really fun, or not fun, it's a musty, musky um, scented candle, and I like it a lot. I haven't lit it yet, but so far I like it. So yeah. So, um, so that was the fun part of the work and the fun, non-fun. Um, since then, work has been crazy. Um, we're trying to do a lot of the catch-up work because they, the third-party administrator, technically started in July, but um, September was the date that they would take over everything. Um, so there's been a lot of backlog because we've been trying to get some stuff done, but we couldn't get everything done, and we're just slowly getting through it. Um, it's taking some time. It's taking a lot of time and it's a lot of energy. So when I am done for the day, I usually like edging out because I have my mind is so hard, like core working on stuff. Um, and then finally, uh, for me, um, gaming. Yay. Um, um, I'm starting a, with some friends, I am doing a, um, D and D improv podcast kind of thing. Ooh. We haven't started recording yet, but we are, um, we've met a few times. We're kind of working out our characters and stuff like that so that when we actually present it to, in a podcast format, um, it's a little bit more developed. Um, but, you know, we've got a group of, uh, a very queer centric group of, of folks that are um, coming together and um yeah it should be a lot of fun i'm actually looking forward to us actually recording and getting on you know getting it out there and see what happens it will be just a audio podcast because i think we just feel a little bit more comfortable doing it as just that way um Mm -hmm. but we'll you know depending on how things go you know maybe we'll have you know pictures and stuff made and et cetera, et cetera, so forth and so on. Um, yeah, but I'm look, I, that's been fun. And then my other D and D group, we finally met after a bit of a hiatus last night and had a really good time. Um, I really like this group. I'm really liking what we're doing. And, um, what do you play? Yeah. So we we're playing D and D fifth edition in right. the, uh, in the, Game that I played last night, I am a Dragonborn fighter, keeping it simple-ish. And then <laughs> in uh, the podcast game, um, I created a very a noble half-elf um, cleric that's just very snooty and patootie, and I kind of like it. Like, it's, a, it's really fun. It's really fun. He's really, really gay. Like... <laughs> like super gay but yeah yeah that's me interesting yeah gary 
Um, I had a busy time uh, with things, but <laughs> so this is kind of the legacy. Uh, it's been work, uh, dealing with my dad, which I'll get into in a little bit, and sleep, and then repeat <laughs> uh, day in and day out. So um, back in August, uh, my dad uh, took a couple bad falls uh, at home. He didn't break anything, but he did bang himself up pretty good. And um, I was really concerned about his condition. So he uh, went into the hospital to get checked out and then was in a rehab facility for a week and a half. And uh -huh. he's back home. Uh, okay. But I am now checking in on him probably. Well, it was originally four times a day, then three times a day, not just like twice a day, like making sure that he has his medications and he's taking them and eating and, you know, has what he needs and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Yay. so, yeah, um, so it's, you know, kind of been a, a cycle of that stuff. Um, he's, uh, he's doing rather well. Um, you know, we do some grocery shopping, you know, once a week and that kind of stuff, but he's, uh, Still independent, so <laughs> I'm learning a lot by his um, decisions to do things his way. Okay, I'll put it that way. <clears throat> so, not like I've ever been known to, you know. Be oh no, <laughs> not you about how I <laughs> achieve certain things. What you? No. Yeah. No. So. And um and then the Drench Fur Group is you know we're organizing and putting things together and uh, registration is about to kick off uh, whoop, whoop. very soon. So as soon as we're done with the podcast, guess what I'm working on today? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and then um, like we're getting the hotel contract piece squared up. Um, and unfortunately, just due to the circumstances with work and uh, with that and stuff, I'm not going to be really doing any traveling. At least I don't think I will be for uh, the time to come. It remains to be seen. Like, he's relatively okay, but I feel like if I'm going to leave for any period of time, like even just for a weekend, I need someone to check in on him. So, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, so uh, WBW is coming up, World Bear Weekend. Um, I know a bunch of people that are going, so I'm yeah. looking forward to hearing how enjoyable that weekend is. Uh, it's uh, scary scary halloweeny kind of fright <laughs> thing this year so paul lanner who has been our guest in the past is part of the uh group that's helping organize and put that producer. together he's so a, it's he's a, producer. he's a producer yeah so it's <laughs> it's in his wheelhouse to say the least um yeah. so yeah and uh so that's pretty much kind of it i mean I hate to say it, but I mean, uh, work is interesting. There's new training coming this week. Uh, so that will be curious to see how that kind of plays out. Um, oh, the HIV task force that I'm a part of, we did an HIV awareness walk. Ooh. And the mayor of the city attended um, for the first time, which was nice. Um, yeah, so just Ooh. plugging away at things, you know, trying to get stuff done and and, and things of that nature. So well, I think that's kind of it. You know, I just, I feel like um, my life has been a bit of a slow blender for the, the past like two months. Mm -hmm. Fair. Know. Fair enough. So, yep. Well, we got a lot of catch, catch up on besides just our lives. Uh, so let's get right into it. Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? All right, so uh, we got one Facebook share. Uh, Mr. Aaron Moberg shared COL 525. What is confidence Ooh. episode post? Hey. Uh, so we appreciate that. Uh, something about it he liked and he uh, passed that on. We also got uh, four new likes on Facebook. Uh, since last time we chatted about this. So we want to thank Anwar, Lord Sire, Stephen Buzz Foster, which that name sounds real familiar. Mm. 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 <laughs> For those of you that don't know why we're doing that, uh, go back through the CML archives to the Father's Day episode post where uh, 
he was on talking about uh, being a foster parent and then adopting. Yeah. Uh, also, we want to thank Ronnie Cassis and Bruce Gore for liking us on Facebook. And then uh, we got some comment posts. So regarding uh, CAL 522, which was transparent interview, Charles S. Scott said, great episode with like five little bear emojis. Uh, CAL 519 was our last what's going on. It was for the month of July. And Q, a.k.a. Michael uh, Quinichette, LMT, which is licensed massage therapist, he said, uh, if reference to my phone call into, into COL, this is what I meant when I said, get on top of the client. Kissy emoji, <laughs> laughy, like crying emoji. So he, he included a picture, which we'll end up posting to the website. But um, we were talking about uh, what massage table weights, like how much they can hold. Mm-hmm. Because I think that stemmed from the whole like porn fantasy thing about people fucking on a massage table and whether or not mm-hmm. that really can hold bears. And so Michael was letting us know about the different weights, and then he made reference to getting on top of his clients. And of course, we were all like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> so he sent us a picture of him, uh, like basically for those that aren't going to see the picture. So he's kneeling and using his body weight with gravity to put pressure on top of the other person who is laying down, and he's working on their glutes. So he's like using gravity as part of like the pressure onto the body. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's not, it's not poor, but you could use your imagination. Uh, (laughs) It's probably, it's a hop, skip and a jump to porn, probably depending on the nature of the Well, there's some clothes removal, you know, it's gotta happen. Well, yeah, that would have to happen. Yes, of course. But pushing things aside. Uh, And then uh, in Facebook's cousin over in Instagram, we have some new followers. We want to thank A.S. Cohn, Toadberg, MSD underscore 1802, Isaac.Benjamin.14, and Demon Doctor the Series. Mm, nice. Uh, Instagram comments. So Owen, who's actually in our live chat right now, um, was commenting and said, it's so beautiful. And he posted pictures of the C.A.W.L. chili bowl that he bought. Yay. Because we do have chili bowls and soup bowls, which are amazing. I got one in the soup bowls. I love it. It's and my favorite see. soup bowl. You could get those at Southland.com b- slash Cubs Out Loud. Exactly. The, and they're, <laughs> at least the soup bowl, I haven't gotten the chili bowl, but the soup bowl, it's... It, Compared to my normal bowls that I use for for soup, the, this is it's wider and it holds a lot more soup. So mm-hmm. it's it's a very functional. Um, um, that and it has a nice little you know cupish handle. So, Ooh. so what I'm hearing is is that it's big boy functional soup bowl. Oh yeah, totally. To I'm not. Works. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's good and, and even my soup bowl is good for for chili too but you know chili bowls tend to have like the the square bottom versus kind of like the rounded bottom like normal soup bowls mm. and the last comment we got on instagram uh was regarding cal 516 which was let's talk about sex series what porn taught us part one haunt cub said i wonder what a daddy cub could contribute I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm sure you can contribute a lot. <laughs> so I don't know if he was saying he's the daddy cub and that he wants to contribute, or he was asking about like potentially one of us or Hadrian. Like, I was like, I'm very intrigued by this. So, yeah, well, let's. We, we need some more his, information. Yeah, we're checking his Insta right now. There you go. Hey. Well, I can't look at his profile, but I can see his first picture. Yeah, Daddy, like, by all means, enlighten us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, And that was kind of uh, that portion of things. Damon, what about over on YouTube? So over on YouTube, we got a new subscriber. Um, uh, Don't quite, no, wait, yes, I do. Um, Lavelle Trahan, welcome. I believe I know that name. Yeah. And then we got a couple of comments on several of our episodes um, on COL 429, our <laughs> power hour. Um, five. From five. Oh, God. This, this is an old one. Power hour five. 429. Ah. Wow. 
So a flashback. Um, Elwin um, responded or said, uh, left us a message and said tacos and enchiladas, and then and more shirtless Gary. You might have a fan, Gary. You just have to tune into the Power Hour Six and the Power Hour Seven. Like it happens every year. <laughs> speaking of Power Hour Seven, so speaking of speaking of Power Hour Seven, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Segue. We got a comment on <laughs> Power Hour 7, um, episode 523. Um, and it's Owen says, I'm scared. Drunk me is on the internet. Um, LOL. For the record, I was good on shots until I reached the minute of my birthday. Then started skipping. And then he p- put in uh, parentheses. I also might have been trying to hold some of it down. Aww. Mm. Well, thank you for being a trooper and, and trying to make it through, Owen. Trust me, it's it's not easy. And as someone who has decided to stop doing it after a debacle a few years ago, love you, sweetie. And, the, <laughs> the, and those who, who, who have, to, have to do it, you know, sometimes you kind of have to think about it in strategy, such as the fact that beer is carbonated beverage, which can mm-hmm. cause, cause issues. So it may not necessarily be the alcohol. <laughs> Yeah, it's usually not the alcohol. Sometimes it's just like all that carbonation. Oh. Yeah, so oh. you have to anyway. find the right beer. It's got to be at least flavorful so you enjoy drinking a lot of it. And uh, it, and then it's it, it's it's just, you Jeff, know, opening up those bottles to, to kind of like let it decarbonate a little. So. And did you say like it's better when it's warm or cold? Depending on the beer, it's... It, it can be better when it's a little bit warmer. Mm-hmm. So. so I remember. Yeah. So there's that. All right. Help, helpful hits for the next power hour. Yeah. Uh, for you people who are uh, searching around for on Vimeo for our videos, we do have have a couple videos on there. Unfortunately, it can get really expensive to have video a lot of videos on vimeo which we can't afford so that's why we're all on youtube nowadays but we just still do have some on, on vimeo such as cwl tv 12 this is from like the first generation and it was actually uh liked by ali um for mr hot bear contest 9 or 09 so this is like back in 2009 that it was recorded uh it was our fourth part of that so thank you uh, we had a couple of emails. Okay, so here's here's where things are uh, going to get a little long. So bear with us, guys. Okay, so Henry says, uh, uh, emailed us, said, Hi, guys, still enjoying your podcast for all these years. Although the one about trans acceptance did seem to go on and on and got on my nerves. Not sure if that's because I'm personal, personally uncomfortable with the subject or just due to my habitual short attention span. Anywho, to quote Damon, you're calling in... in uh, COL 515 for suggestions topics of future shows made me think of one wonder what it was oh, wonder what it was in the time it took to seek out your website to go to contact us fill in the top of the form and type the proceeding to two paragraphs it completely slipped my mind age <sighs> age takes its toll oh yeah <laughs> that's it you jokingly mentioned being uh, together in a home 50 years years from now and still putting on the podcast immediately brought to mind the subject of retirement homes for gay men. Uh, sometime something that has been on my mind as I, as I age, I have found none in the Atlanta area and I wonder if they exist in other locales. If so, perhaps you could bring in a representative from one, a resident would be great to, to talk about the concept, the demand, the challenges and rewards for getting them up and running the general atmosphere in such a place and whatever else y'all and the guest might think appropriate. None of us is getting younger. And what do I do now is a question that is increasingly comes up. Thanks for considering this and keep on casting. Henry. Thanks, Henry. So gay retirement and, homes. Yeah. So I did a really quick search because that's what I do. Gay uh-huh. retirement communities. Um, and there's a couple of um older um like articles on like the best lgbt retirement communities and there's 120 retirement communities for lgbt seniors but that's like almost three years old 
top 15 LGBT senior leaving communities. Yeah, there's, so there's a few websites. Oh, this one's from June. Let's see. Most LGBT friendly places to retire to in America. So that's kind of a little different kind of take on it. It's just to like, instead of like an actual like retirement home or retirement community, that's more like, where do you want to live when you're older? Um, so yeah, interesting. Huh. I wonder if they're good. That might be something to think about maybe. Um, just as a generalization, it's not, it's uh, adjacent, but um, if anyone is interested in your on Facebook, if you go to facebook.com slash Sage USA, that's S A G E U S A. Um, so if you hadn't heard before, I actually kind of follow them because I found it interesting. So Sage is the country's largest and oldest organization dedicated to improving the lives of LGBT older people. It was founded in 78 mm. in New York City. Um, and they are an organization that's like thinking along those lines because as a community, theoretically, if you use the Stonewall rights and 69 is like the the beginning of the current era um, in terms of our community. <laughs> so um, that that concept of, you know, we are aging, you know, and what are our rights and uh, those type of things, that might be something to consider. And I can't think of what it is, but I do know there is a company that has been working, um, um, and her name just went out of my head. There's a, I think Martina Navratilova, um, Colonel Margaret Kammermeyer, is that her name? Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other individuals who are older LGBT that have become involved in this concept. And I wanna say it's like in the Southwest area of the US, maybe Arizona or New Mexico that they're like, I don't think they've broken ground necessarily, but they're thinking about um, this exact very thing about, you know, that we're going to get older and, you know, what if we had, um, you know, a senior facility for, or senior living community for, mm -hmm. you know, uh, LGBT. So I'm not specifically, uh, you know, part of it, but, um, but I know that Sage has some information regarding um, age-friendly housing across the country, okay. um, things like that. So, but I definitely think, I mean, I know it's been kind of kidded about and teased, you know, that it's a senior mm -hmm. facility, you know, and <laughs> so there's going to be, uh, you know, Broadway brunch Sundays, and, <laughs> you know, all sorts of, you know, drag queen bingo every Wednesday, you know, or whatever, and, and you know, that kind of, that teasing stuff. But no, I mean, I think conceptually, like it is definitely a thing. And I know that that's something that, you know, has been studied a little bit or talked about in terms of, you know, how to, uh, how will we be integrated, you know, and how is that recognized and, you know, handled, um, you know, in, in senior living? Not that you have, to, we have to have one of our own, um, you know, necessarily, but, uh, you know, if there's ones that are, you know, um, more adaptive or involved um, in that case. So, yeah. But there's definitely um, some things to, to consider about that. And uh, next up, we have a follow up on uh, uh, email that we had had earlier about how some people actually go to the website and just download the podcast for various reasons. Um, I had re recently removed the the download podcast link at the, from the bottom of the post uh, just because I, I felt like I didn't need to use it, but apparently I do um, because some people listen that way, cool. which, is, which is totally fine. Um, so Ursus Major let us know, and he followed up. Thanks again for restoring to download the podcast. Could you do that for episodes 512, 516? Uh, done and done. <laughs> just did that this morning so um uh, if you hear this and need to go back well there you go uh, and we got it ended up being three voicemails but it really is just one voicemail mm. um because okay. our, our voicemail it looks like it cuts off after three minutes so uh either if you call our voicemail just Try to get it done in three minutes, or uh, if you feel like you might need some more time, 
just go ahead and just use your voice memo, memo app on your phone uh, record it there and then just email it to us that way we can all have it all in one so that's another option for you um, but uh, yeah this one is kind of a uh, response to our what is series uh, with both our self-love and self-hate episodes mm -hmm. um, you'll, you'll hear what I mean hey guys this is Owen slash Howard slash whoever you want me to be and you can check that as kinky or not kinky as you want. Anyways, I want to leave a message uh, concerning your what is the videos and just diving deeper into the, the different topics there. Um, I've been going through a lot recently and it's... I, I don't know if you guys realize... Um, so, so this is the same Howard that sent the email about being autistic and taking pride in being autistic and being neurologically different. There's a catch-22 with that. I take pride in being autistic because I have to. And what I mean by that is that I... I I went through school, I dealt with a lot of self-hate, and it's because I noticed the changes. I, I noticed all the changes between myself and others, and I, I noticed the, the differences in social interaction and doing whatever. Um, I noticed all these things. So... I had to, well, and I didn't learn this until way later in my life, but I had to take pride in who I was as an autistic person. Um, so in doing that, I had to learn a little bit more about why I was different, what functions made me different versus other non-autistic no typical people. Um, in saying that, I just I just lost three friends from that who I went to a trip with to Vegas. I lost contact with all of them, and uh, and it was because of something that made made me act out or I acted out and that kind of ruined the trip for them. But here's the thing. I I accept the things that I did. I accept all the wrong things I did. I said sorry for them and I accept them because that they are part of what makes me me. I like sometimes I act out negatively. Sometimes it can that's the three minute mark. Moving on to the next one. Anyways, I'm going to try to get to my point as fast as I can. There's the catch 22 with me accepting myself and loving myself for who I am. And basically, I'm taking pride in who I am. And basically, that is that I hate the parts of me that make up me. I hate my stems. I hate my sinking. I hate. My dancing, snapping of fingers, the things I do to try to keep my level of cool and stress and calm under prep, under wraps and at a manageable level. Um, I literally hate myself sometimes. I hate who I am. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I just, I hate who I am intrinsically, but the thing is I can't change it. I can't change any of those things. And when you can't change something that is so intrinsically a part of you, you just have to... You just have to hope that you can make 
friends who understand and realize these things about you. And the thing about that is you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose people who don't understand who won't accept those things about you. And it hurts so freaking much. And I'm sorry. But, yeah. Okay. That's all I want to say is that sometimes, sometimes self-love can come with self-hate. Another thing that I want to say is self-hate is absolutely taught by society. That's not something you learn on your own. And the tragic thing about self-love is that you have to learn it because if you learn self-hate, then you have to learn self-love. I'm sorry. I'm just... I've been through a lot. My relationships with people have been... so confusing. This is one of the reasons why I have such a hard... But, yeah, I accept myself, I accept positive and negative aspects of myself, I accept the things that make me different, and I try to love myself even though can experience so much self-hate because of what my reality is. So, anyways, uh, that's kind of my take on it. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. So, first off, Howard, I thought it was awesome that you called in, even though it had to keep calling. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I think that, like, you really uh, helped kind of, like, clarify on some things that I, I don't recall if we specifically got into some of what you were describing. But it's true that, you know, there's a balance. You're trying to, you know love who you are and yet at the same time you know weigh out what you feel are negatives about yourself mm -hmm. um whether you feel that you can change them or are unable to change them i grew up thinking about how i always wanted to be taller um and you know that just was not in the cards for me thanks mom um <laughs> her, her side of the family runs shorter so um I mean, you know, you just, I think there's a, a kind of a personal reckoning with things in the course of, you know, your time of your life. The more experience I think you have being you and knowing who you are, I think uh, balances things and then moves it more in the direction that you love yourself than you don't love yourself. Um, I also thought you said something really profound in that and where you said, you know, that you are basically taught to love yourself or to hate yourself. And if you come from an environment in which you have self hate, then you also have to learn how to love yourself. Like mm -hmm. it's, and it's not a light switch. It just doesn't happen, you know, in the blink of an eye. Um, you know, I'm in my mid forties and I'm still dealing with shit. Uh, that's the the nature I think of part of being a human being, and I think that you know, it was really awesome of you to open up about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I also think it was you know incredibly brave, and and I appreciate you you know wanting to talk about that stuff and help us recognize and understand that you know we're all going on journeys, and each of you as an audience member have something that you know, or multiple things that you're you're working through yeah. and balancing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. That's kind of putting the thoughts in my head that I was trying to like say. So thank you for that. <sighs> so hopefully, uh, Howard, if you want to, you know, call in again or send us any comments and stuff, that's totally fine. Um, you know, we hope that part of what we're doing here for the podcast is is helping people come to terms with themselves and you know, broadening your understanding of things, um, whether it be, you know, through silliness or jokes or, you know, serious stuff. I mean, that some of those topics. Yeah. I mean, self-love and self-hate. I don't think we got like super down, you know, and, and uh, super serious about those topics, but they're things that, you know, are part of our lives. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. All so right. thanks, thanks for the voicemails. It's awesome. Thank stuff you. Here. Yes, really appreciate it. Uh, moving on to our uh, over in the Twitterverse, uh, we've got uh, new followers. We got Guy Beefy, Puck Smoke, a pup, Smoke, just to kind of like make sure you say uh, the real zero seven three four nine six three zero. Chub for me, I best hat lights. <laughs> Can't find where that is. A best hat light. Uh, Ibis that lights. Yeah. One. One. <laughs> uh, Ibis that lights. Something like that. Ah, there we go. Uh, Bay there. lover one. Frank six zero four four two zero four six. Uh, David Co seven nine nine two zero eight nine nine. Uh, Swiss adult baby and city's cub. Ah, city's cub. Yeah, he's been sending me a lot of private messages. I'll okay. be up his way soon here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. For those of you that are in the Telegram chat, you may know that there's, there's an expectation of some videos to be made. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, also a comment on the uh, COL 521, what is respect uh, from Gear Trekker 65 um, says, is the closing optional gay ca- campground mentioned in the episode The Woods Campground in Leeton, PA? So that's a great question. I had to try to remember what the hell we discussed six episodes ago. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think you were talking about Roseland. Maybe. It's possible. It was I, it, I think it was the one that you worked at. If it's the one that I worked at, then it was at Roseland. If it wasn't the one that I worked at and I was making reference to something happening at a campground, then it may very well have been the woods. But I don't quite recall because I didn't really go back and listen to the whole episode to remember, but so I'm going to give you 50-50 on that. Yes, maybe. 50-50. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Question mark? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, Gary, tell us about the uh, shows that we've been doing over the last two months. Well, we kind of got <laughs> feedback on most of them in some form. Uh, the What's Going On was, uh, that was number 519, What's Going On July of 2019, last time we discussed and got up on stuff. Uh, 520 was part two of the Let's Talk About Sex uh, mini series with Porn Taught Us with Hedrian. Then we did What is Respect, uh, followed by super special episode of CWL 522 Transbury Listener Interview. Uh, where TV came on, so it was yay, that was super, super exciting. Sexy. And <laughs> COL 523 was the infamous Power Hour 7, Jeff's birthday basharino, where we all drank on cam. I survived and this time, I'm very proud of myself. You did, and you actually, I think, correctly measured this time. I had so. an appropriate shot glass. <laughs> which is still on my desk I probably should put yes. that in the dishwasher <laughs> yeah. probably one of my favorite things about that was uh, Lloyd joining us from across the the water uh, mm-hmm. and from across the pond he is being super grumpy about the fact that it was like the middle of the night or morning or something Very for him. early in the morning for him yeah. 
So that was fun. Uh, CoL 524, uh, continuing the Let's Talk About uh, Sex series, What Porn Taught Us was part three, where we talked about the future of porn, potentially. What we think it might be. <laughs> and then uh, CoL 525, we went back to What Is series and talked about confidence. And then last week was CoL 526. Let's talk about kink from yuck to yum. Yay. So, got a bunch of uh, series stuff kind of done in the, the past couple months. Get that t- uh, all taken care of. And yeah. with that, let's go into something that's a little more risque. <laughs> All right. So my Twitter post uh, is from Smashy. Yay. Uh, he, he also posted it on Facebook and I'm sure, sure various other places, but it's just a series of uh, some pictures of him that's just taken last night. That's what he, what he just mm-hmm. said in the post. And it's just him on the shirt list on the uh, boardwalk. Um, and... I- it's pretty because Smash is pretty. He's pretty. So it isn't as porny as normal. But you know it's all right. It's fine. He's it's a, a handsome man. Beer. He's a sexy beer. Handsome fuzzy. Yes he is. <laughs> yes he is. Yes he is. Such <laughs> a cute <laughs> puppy. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Damon. So I actually have two. Um, I'm going to start with the second one first. Um, so our friend, Mr. Burberry Crusher or Bear Burley Crusher, um, he was feeling thick, so he took a picture. And yeah. Yeah. Our friends up north are very beautiful. Just, just, just putting it out there. <laughs> Those damn Canadians. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he is definitely thick. Yum, yum, yummity yum. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. I'm just going to, before you move on, David, so your Before. GIF reply <laughs> to that tweet <laughs> is so messy, <laughs> but funny. Yes. Girl, you're thinking of a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> So that I forget that is from some um I don't think it's from a an actual TV show. I think it's from an actual like court courtroom scene. Yeah, it kind of looks yeah, like a courtroom it. scene. And um I just I've seen that so many times and I use it cuz I just it just it's appropriate most of the time. <laughs> yeah. So um uh, so my next one is actually something that I has been hitting the um, Facebook and stuff for a while, and it is essentially the um, Kyle Long doesn't give a shit about Instagram Live. Um, it is a video of another football player on his team that is go who went on Instagram Live for something, and there's someone in the background that is just like changing clothes and if you wait until the last bit uh-huh. you gotta watch the whole thing you get all of them yep all of them so it's kind of nice it, it's kind of in the background so you don't get like mm. a really good look but you know yeah but it's good and, it, and, and it's only from the side you don't get the full frontal necessarily so yeah you can kind of, if you like wait like very quickly, right before he puts the towel up, you kind of get a good look at all of it. But it's, you got to like really pay attention. Um, but he's a nice looking guy. But I, I saw this on um, Facebook first. Someone, there was an um, article someone had written, I believe, in, I believe it must have been a gay, like, or something like that, or um, website or something. And just like, because it apparently happened and, 
it has so far it hasn't been taken down um hmm. possibly because it's being pulled from someone else in grad but as of right now it's had 262,000 views oh it's had more views than that oh oh gosh i guarantee oh yeah but it's a lot and it's like i mean he's you know it's very nice to see so there you mm, go. He probably didn't even notice know that it was actually going on. He wasn't even. Oh no! I, I I guarantee he didn't realize that he was just you know stripping naked and letting the family jewels hang out there in the locker room on a live stream. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, he certainly I, doesn't have anything to be ashamed of. So hell to the no! If you read the <laughs> comment thread, some people have been talking about like you know size and proportion and flaccidness and like calling out like haters for you know being like you know that he ain't all that well endowed and then people are like you do realize how big the dude is right and like yeah. you know <laughs> nah. so i'm like i fully realize it i am i'm down for that like mm-hmm. yes please mm-hmm. thank you yes so please much. all up and in this mouth right now like so. i don't care about the size it's, it's, if it's if it's if it's if he's enjoying what is being done to it then that is all that matters well you know He's just a mm-hmm. beautiful man. So, yeah. Oh, that's good. But yeah. <sighs> that's mine, Gary. Uh, mine's called Session with Sir recently. Uh, so I've been following this person on Twitter for a while now. Uh, at R Bakes Porn. Um, the full title is Session with Sir recently taking a break and feeling safe and relaxed. Uh, and I just love the, the intimacy of the this and particular so one. Tweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what I find interesting about it is uh, it appears that Sir is on his phone looking through something and then boy Ryan like captured a, a moment. So I don't know if this is a screen grab like from a video or necessarily how this was done, but um mm. I'm perfectly fine with it. It's Mm -hmm. a a really great picture. So it's moments like this that I like that are like, you know, kind of uh, adult porn, but also like, you know, artistic Mm -hmm. and intimate. And so, yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't for the head of the daddy's penis, like right there at the neck of the guy. Oh, look at that. It would, yeah, it would be like a good artistic, like nude. It's still, it's still, it's still, I mean, it still is, art but now. you know, but you know what I mean? Like it would actually be like, you just like, wouldn't have, yeah, I know what you mean. To, you, there would not yeah. be a need for an eggplant emoji. Got it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it would not be to be censored. Yeah. It also makes me want to just like get up in them cakes, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's that. That's not, you know, but it would be booty. Um, <laughs> yeah just uh well he's just laying there and showing him from the back anyways moving mm-hmm. uh moving into the links uh at the end of august it has returned and that is mm-hmm. good eats Yay. brand spanking new episodes there's at least two a week uh i think it's only like 13 episodes or something this season but Hopefully he keeps doing some more. Um, yeah. And it's really good. He's he's doing it more. Uh, I think he's in New York now. Instead of uh, in Atlanta. So mm-hmm. his space, while reminiscent of the old set, uh, is now more kind of like a New York based sort of thing. And it still has uh, a reverency and everything. Um, but uh, yeah. And uh, don't forget, there's also Good Eats Reloaded, which, where he revisits some old, old episodes, and oh, which is really good, too. Mm. Needless to say, as I said, uh, since Food Network finally got into YouTube TV, uh, I've been watching a bunch of that. So. Ah. Uh, such as Iron Chef America. <laughs> Iron Chef Showdown and Iron Chef Gauntlet too. Oh, and the Kids Baking Challenge or Championship. <laughs> and Buddy versus Duff, mainly because I like Duff. 
Mm-hmm. Anyways. Mm-hmm. The, mm, I would eat his cakes <laughs> any day. Ha! If you know what I mean. Uh, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, and it is now time for uh, Gary's uh, Netflix picks of the week. Or <laughs> two months. Two months. Two months. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I've come to realize, like, because I don't have cable, like, I mostly watch Netflix and or Hulu or YouTube. Like, those are the three main things I go to all the time. Although I did sign up for Disney Plus because there's some important shit that's coming to it. And, uh, like, I just started paying attention to how much they fucking own. It's a lot. Yeah, um, <laughs> they got a shit ton. So the fact that there's a lot of stuff that they have access to and or control over that could potentially be coming through the streaming service was really important to me. So like I've hemmed and hawed on whether or not I want to get CBS all access, which there's only one show on that that I really want to watch or no, actually two now. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of uh, annoying me, but, and as someone recently pointed out, so what are we going to start bundling our streaming services just like cable used to do? But anyways, Oh my God. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, to to be fair, there there have been similar type of things, um, where it's like uh like Verve is actually VRV dot co, um is kind of a is a bundle of if you subscribe to them, it, it is essentially a bundle of um different services such as Crunchyroll, uh, Shutter. Uh, and a few other things I can't think of off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are bundle-ish sites, but mm-hmm. uh, not to the extremity of like you can go to one place and just kind of bundle in Hulu, Netflix, and right Disney Plus or something like that. Although I wouldn't be surprised if Disney ends up coming up with like some sort of package between Hulu and Disney Plus. Because they're going to be owning a majority of Hulu now. Well, there's a. I thought I read an online article and or rumor. Take your pick, of Disney Plus bundling them Hulu and ESPN packaging. Yeah, because they're all Disney owned. Essentially. So I thought that was kind of interesting, and I thought that was actually a really smart move on their part. But I already have Hulu, and I don't really care about ESPN. So. Um, so I went ahead and uh, got the Disney Plus thing. So I'm looking forward to that because the Which Mandalorian is, cheap. is coming up. Yeah, so. and it's 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 inexpensive. It's probably yeah. one of the cheaper services out there too, and it's just like one price. Yeah, you know they don't have different uh, options. They just get the one. So that being said, uh, in the past two months, I watched a whole bunch of Netflix. Uh, a lot of it was either prequels and or sequels slash continuations of stuff. So uh, my next guest needs no introduction with David Letterman season two came out and that was really good. Um, Comedians and cars getting coffee. The new 2019 freshly brewed season uh, of episodes came out, which was good. And if you actually have Netflix and you watch it on that, there's actually, I think, two uh, non-episode like Q&A interview kind of episodes uh, so they're not the typical format they're actually Q&A type stuff where uh, Jerry and someone else gets asked questions so um, hmm. yeah I, I like that uh, one of them is Eddie Murphy uh, which is interesting um, Tiffany Haddish presents they ready uh, <laughs> Tiffany Haddish made a, a series of I think it's about six or eight comedians that she came up with that she feels need to be known and in the limelight. Um, one of them is trans and girl, like just be ready for like some cray cray. Uh, <laughs> but I really enjoyed the series and liked it a, uh, a lot. And then um, for those of you that heard me kind of talk about this much earlier, because I was super, super excited, uh, the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance season one. Pause. Think about that for a second. Uh, came out on Netflix with uh, the Henson Company. They worked collaboratively on it. Um, the Crystal Calls is a documentary. It's making of the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. It's fascinating it's a great uh, hour and a half i have watched both the season one prequel and the making of twice in completion wow uh, i just 
could not get enough of like how amazing this stuff is. Um, and so everyone's been talking about the fact that like, oh, if they called it season one, there must be a season two. So Netflix typically uh, has a logarithm that after about four, the first four weeks of anything being released that they, they personally made helps them drive and make the decision on continuing on. Um, I think there's a high likelihood that they're going to continue on with another season because of not only the fandom and like the reaction of like how great it is, but also where the end of this prequel season ends is not the beginning of the movie that we all knew from the eighties. There's a, there's a bit of a gap in the story in the history and the lore. So there's more stuff to fill in. Yeah. And it, mm. it, it's interesting though, is the fact that, uh, it's Henson is, uh, or the Jin Henson studios are actually owned by Disney. Mm-hmm. So, Hopefully they just continue just letting this be a Netflix thing. Maybe Netflix is paying for it and it's basically third party hiring them for it or something. Uh, And and hopefully that's what it continues to be. Or we might have another, you know, Marvel thing going on. Or if Netflix thinks, oh, well, we don't longer want to do this. uh, Maybe then we'll just move over to Disney+. Plus. I think I think Netflix made a really, really smart decision in deciding to back the thing the way they did it. And I think you're right with the first part, Jeff, that it was they hired the Henson company to be the production like aspect of things like. And so Netflix, I don't think, owns the rights other than like what they like filmed, quote unquote. But, you know, all the rest of it is obviously Disney. So I'm pretty sure there was like some 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 serious money that went back and forth but i'm really hopeful for the fact that they continue because they part of me all kept thinking when i was watching this first season prequel was there's so much stuff that they created like how could they not continue because of all the puppetry and and they probably had to recreate all of that Um, like how much the stuff uh, the question would part of the question might also be how much of this stuff was it was there anything from the original that was like restored and and pulled in? Right. Because it's all puppets. Well, I not, do know they've that... got a few. I think they have a few CG ish things, but yeah. you know, but the actual characters and there's an actual characters, actual sets, and then it's just you know the special effects were all the magic ish right. sort of things. But yeah, the no, there, it was. It was highly practical. I do think if you go online and, and watch, there's a huge fandom for YouTube, which I didn't even know about. Uh, but thanks to Google, uh, like they cross-linked some stuff. So I watched some very interesting other stuff. But there is some things about like restoration of the previous puppetry and that. So I agree. I think that they rebuilt everything. And what's amazing is that the Froud family. So Brian Froud was the artist who created like all the visuals for the original. Um, he was brought in. His son Toby, who uh, like factoid or whatever uh, trivia is the baby from the movie Labyrinth with David Bowie. Hmm. Um, he works with his father and his mother. Like they were part of the whole production. So like it was really very much like from the place that everybody is fandom wanted it to be done. So I'm very hopeful that they're going to continue on with it. So I highly recommend um, it's great for kids, obviously, um, you know, and then the last thing that I just recently watched that came out uh, was The Mind Explained, which is a, a series that's been created through Vox and Netflix. Um, and they did a limited series. Um, so Explained is the series. They did a limited one called The Mind. So they talk about um, different aspects of how the mind works. So feel free yeah. to check that out as well. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that's what I ended up watching over the past couple of months here and there. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to put on uh, Disenchantment. Season two is on. That just came out uh, literally like three days ago. For those of you that don't know, Disenchantment is uh, help me, help me, help me. Uh, Simpsons. Matt Groening, uh, the Simpsons. There you go. Yeah. He made an irreverent fairy tale focused cartoon animated series uh, that came out last year called Disenchantment uh, about a princess named Teeny Beanie and everything that like kind of goes wrong. And so she has two sidekicks. One is a uh, an elf that's sort of in love with her ish and uh, a demon named Lucy. <laughs> you just have to watch it. It's kind of stupidly fun. Nice. So, Hey, guess what folks? That's the end. Oh, 
plenty of ways to contact us. Papa Patrol website comes out loud.com. Shoot us an email um, with a voicemail if you use your voice memo app or uh, otherwise at comes out loud at gmail.com. Uh, you can't leave us a voicemail, it only runs for three minutes. So keep it short. Um, at 361C, we'll talk. That's 361-265-8255. Um, you can find us on various social media outlets on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, on YouTube. At comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you mm. can find out when we record these shows at uh, tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col on a computer. And then once you subscribe, you should have access to it on your Google Calendar and mobile. Um you can find various merchandise such as this smashy design now that we're sticky here's your cookie t-shirt uh mm-hmm. also a smashy designed consent is my foreplay shirt that gary is wearing hats of various types that also gary is wearing gary's being our model today and uh damon doesn't have anything on so that's fine no, and various other that's not on. true david is wearing clothes <laughs> just, just none of our merchandise that's all that's fine it's fine you don't always have to wear he's it, so. promoting what killer bob right now i think right yeah yeah yes this is the killer bob design yeah killer bob's cool cool uh that's at zazzle.com slash cups out loud if you find any sort of merchandise that uh on the uh, zazzle store that is that we don't have anything of and you would like something comes out loud just let us know uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We appreciate you folks very, very, very much. Helps with hosting, and hopefully we'll be building up to possibly a new computer build. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm I'm looking to, we, we need to hit probably $1,000 or so um, just to make sure I've got, can pay for everything to get all the parts. Um and you can uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and uh, subscribe to us on Google Play Podcasts. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet. It says box at box, 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 cub, box, something or other. Mm-hmm. Um, I am Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook, or you can find me at pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. That's G A R B E A R 73. Mm-hmm. And programming note: next week we will be flashing back because I will not be in town. I will flashback, be in flashback, town. flashback. Mini soda. Two thirds of us will not be available next Sunday, so I get a week <laughs> off. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all. That's what I need to do. I'll be right back. Okay. Then tell me he's going to use one of those urinals. Perhaps. Quite possibly. So I realized part of the way into the show that I left my closet door wide open in the background. So Mm. it's not a big deal, but I was trying to be conscious before the show to like close it. So, you know. People don't see my <laughs> storage, so to speak. That's okay. Have you seen my background? It's not much better. 
I kind of wish I had like a green screen or something that I could put up there and. Uh, thanks, Tubbs. He says we saw everything. Well, you didn't see quite everything because uh, while I may be Winnie the Poohing it right now, um, you didn't get to see that. Oh. So there you go. Brown chicken brown cow. Oh, well, yeah. It's it's a lazy Sunday morning. That's how that is. That's how Sunday morning should be. Unfortunately, my afternoons not so lazy. Yeah. What is it that we're doing next? Week? <laughs> ba ba ba. <clears throat> All right. We are doing <gasps> our first high school, first slash high school crushes episode. Ooh. C O L two thirty one. <laughs> 